We cannot change YouTube. We cannot change Facebook. We cannot change Twitter. We cannot change any of these pieces of technology to fit our needs. That's not how this stuff works. Necessity is the mother of invention. We already have all the tools to build the future that we need to build to get away from our overlords and our masters. And it's, uh, you know, we just need the incentive to use these tools to build this brand new internet and this brand new future for all of us. So if they're the ones that are incentivizing us, well, hey, so be it. That's usually how it goes. All right. If all of a sudden, you know, they make your favorite thing illegal, is that going to make you stop doing your favorite thing? No, it's not. All right. So it's just that same mentality. All right. Now multiply that by millions and millions and millions and millions of people. Yeah, exactly. You know, when it comes to like government intervention, it does, and the government doesn't really have a great track record um, to any of this stuff. Um, I'll just give you an example that we all know off the top of our head, but the war on drugs. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. <clears throat> Today, we're going to be talking about those new FTC rules that have been set for YouTube. What am I talking about? If you guys haven't heard yet, um, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, has uh, created these new rules that YouTube has to abide by. And not just YouTube, but every YouTube creator now has to abide by. Now, most people have already heard about these new COPA rules. This, uh, this legislation called COPA that was passed in the 90s and now has been you know, rectified to fit the times, okay? And um, from all the information that you're gonna be gathering from all these other YouTubers out there and YouTube videos talking about this subject, you are gonna realize that literally no one knows what the hell's happening. No one knows what's going on. In fact, I'm gonna go on and um, to a, you know take this to the next level and uh, you know, there's this one guy out there, he's a lawyer, his name is Ian Corzine, and he has uh, YouTube Law, that's his channel, and he talks about everything from, uh, you know, copyright to, to, you know, copyright infringement to um, plagiarism to like, you know, all of the topics that, you know, we as YouTube creators are, you know, for the most part, always constantly dealing with and, and uh, worrying about. And so even him, you know, he finally did an episode you know, earlier today on, you know, it was uploaded Tuesday morning and um, it was literally talking about like, uh, the, the, you know, these new COPA guidelines and, you know, long story short, by the time you finish watching the video, you know, he literally says that everything, all these new laws are so vague that nobody understands them. Nobody gets them. Th these laws are so vague and are going to be left open for interpretation. And um, that's mainly the, the main concern that most people should be having overall. And um, and so at the end of the day, this is not like a new YouTube uh, um, terms of service thing or anything like that. No, this is like an actual law, an actual piece of legislation passed, you know, rectified, whatever, by the U.S. government um, in order to start um, regulating YouTube and start regulating this industry. Okay, so basically how it goes is like this i'm not going to give you the whole explanation i'm not going to give you the whole thing that's not what this channel is about in fact what this channel what i'm going to be talking about in this video is basically well what's going to happen from this moment forward you know well not now but literally from the moment that these rules start really going into place how is this going to affect you how's it going to affect me how's it going to affect other youtubers how's it going to affect youtube how's it going to affect the internet how it's going to affect all that going forward Okay, but basically, you know, let me just give you a quick two second rundown. I know my, my things always take forever, but you know, basically what it is, is that uh, as of, of, of a few weeks ago, every single creator, you know, I'm talking, when I say creator, I'm just talking about people like me, you know, people that make videos uh, for, for you guys. Um, all of a sudden now, you know, we, um, when you go to your, to your desktop, to your dashboard, you know, on your YouTube creator page, you know, you are constantly being prompted to go into um, this new um, settings and start and, and either and you got three choices either a your channel is kid friendly b your channel is adults only or c you have a mixture of both and in that case then what needs to happen is that you need to go video by video and say this is kid friendly this is not kid friendly now 
right off the bat, you know what I mean? That's already, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be good going forward. But, um, you know, as I started doing a little more research and, and, fi and figuring this out, at the end of the day, what's really going to happen is that this is just going to basically um, affect anyone that has any kind of content that might be, again, um, that might be relegated as child content, okay? Now, for, you know, my channel isn't really affected. In fact, the only thing that I can think of that could be, you know, um, affected would be Lambo and his appearances, you know, from here going forward. So if you don't see Lambo um, as much as you normally do, okay, that's my pet horse, by the way, um, now you know why. It's because of this, all right? But as this um, starts, um, you know, as it becomes law, as everybody starts, you know, um, going about their lives through these guidelines, we will all see together at the same time what's gonna happen. Now, there's a lot of theories as to why and what's going on here. You know, I don't know if you guys know, I really don't wanna talk about these things, but um, you know, there is it's kind of like a pedophilia problem out there, a pedo problem, you know, going out out there in the world today. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what's going on. And I really do think that this is just an attempt by the government and by people in power and all that good stuff in order to start curving that a little bit away. Because if you guys don't know, um, there's a lot of videos out on YouTube right now which are, that look like they're kid friendly, that are just like cartoons, you know, they have like this image that, you know, right from the first look at it, you're like, oh, this is super kid friendly. The minute you click on it and you're looking at it and you're watching it, you're like, oh, wait a minute, this is super crazy adult themed. And so YouTube has been having a lot of problems and trouble trying to um, clean this off, the, off their platform. So a lot of times when this happens in history, okay, when this happens in, uh, you know, just, this happens all the time. I'm not gonna get into details as to other examples, but usually when this happens, that's when the government, you know, when, when the corporation or the people um, that, are cause, that are causing this uh, situation or these situations can't fix the problem, then that's when the government comes in to fix the problem for them. And this is what's, what they're doing now um these laws i think are there you know this new um re um establishment of the new um copa laws are there you know literally to establish a brand new um yes oh. <laughs> As, are, are there to establish a brand new protocol going forward when it comes to a lot of these things so, you know, let me give you a quick example um, as to why I think that um, what they're really trying to do here is that they're using all of this um, bad press, okay, in order to scare people to go one way or the other. So, again, for anyone out there that's in public relations, uh, marketing, any, any of that stuff, you guys know fully well there's no such thing as bad publicity. Notice that you're not, you're not seeing YouTube you know, sweating or, you know, you don't see YouTube worrying about any of this. You don't see anyone really worrying about this except creators. And the fact is that everyone's worrying about it. So like, for example, even a channel like mine, I'm not that worried about it, but because of my community being so worried about it, all of a sudden, in turn, it makes me worry. When I see someone that has a channel that is dedicated to just talking about YouTube blog and they're worried about it, then it makes me, you know, obviously want to, you know, look into this a little deeper, henceforth why I'm making this episode. I'm just out here just spitting thoughts and throwing theories out there as to what could be happening. Now, what I think is happening is, is uh, there's a lot of reasons, there's a lot of things that, you know, as to what, why I think, what, what is happening here. But honestly, this is what I think is happening. YouTube has this thing called YouTube Kids. And um, it seems like they've been trying to push this for a while and they're trying to get into, you know, I don't know how it works per se, but, you know, maybe migrate, you know, all the kid-friendly stuff or anything that might be kid related towards that space and keeping a, a, a definite line in the sand between kid content and adult content. So basically every single channel that has any kind of kid related stuff on them or any kind of video with kid related anything, all of a sudden they are not going to be able to use YouTube the way it's supposed to be. You know, not only are they not gonna be able to monetize their videos, they're not gonna be able to do like so many things. I'm not gonna get into details because most of you guys are not creators, you guys don't care. But they're just, all of a sudden, all these things are being taken away from them. It doesn't seem fair. Um, and remember, I don't make any content made for kids or anything like that. So to me, it's like, you know, I'm just looking at it from a, an outside perspective. But now looking at it from a business side perspective, what's happening here 
from my estimation, we don't know, we'll see in the future as this develops, but I think that what's happening is that YouTube is deciding that they are gonna become an adult-only site. What do I mean by adult-only? I'm just talking about anything that's 13 years and 13 years old and above. So anyone above that is um, declared an adult or you know can watch adult-themed uh, content according to the FTC rules, according to the government rules, okay? So what I think YouTube is doing is not only helping is um, you know helping its creators not get in trouble with the FTC and the government, but also protecting their own ass. And at the same time, creating two completely different things. Because just like Disney created Disney Plus, you know, it would be very smart, okay, from from a YouTube, from a you know, from business pers- from a business perspective, for YouTube to all of a sudden create their own, not only their own YouTube kids um, platform, you know, meaning a YouTube kids only um, app, YouTube kids um, platform, YouTube kids servers, the whole thing, you know, meaning that. You know, once when you upload a video, it goes into you know the YouTube Google servers. But literally going the extra route of creating a completely separate building with completely separate servers to just house the kid-friendly stuff. Now again, what is not a conspiracy episode today? We're not going to go down that route as to why they would you know you know the whole separation of all this stuff. You know, we're just well, I'm just you know we're just trying to discuss going forward what these rules could mean and how they're going to be affected. So. This is gonna force everyone that has any kind of uh, content that is gonna get demonetized or deranked or de anything or you know again you can get a forty thousand dollar fine from the from the government you know for not complying so they have to create an incentive for everyone to move over obviously no one's wanted to move over so if all of a sudden this happens you know another YouTube apocalypse in which making kid friendly content is actually um, you know could cost you forty thousand dollars per episode or more or per incident then you know all of a sudden it would be in the best interest of YouTube to create a platform in which they meet all these guidelines and the algorithm is there to vet the video so that no matter what, as long as YouTube vets your video as kid friendly, then it's not gonna get in trouble with the FTC. But if all of a sudden you have some sort of uh, content, like a cartoon, you know, even though it might be some anime which is adult themed and um, it's on YouTube, you know, something like that could actually get you in trouble with the government. Now look guys, you know, to me all of this is just the, is more censorship. Okay? I know you guys are probably waiting all 12 and a half minutes for me to say that, okay? But, you know, the reality is I think most of us have already figured that out. You know, this is just another added layer of censorship, but we got to just look into all the looks and crannies of what's going on here. So now let's talk about the censorship aspect. You know, we already talked about the business aspect. You know, we already talked about the government aspect. We already talked about, you know, the the aspect you know, from their side of the story, meaning as to why, you know, the incentives as to why the government, YouTube as a corporation, and all these entities are, you know, would be willing to do something like this. is literally to keep them both separate, okay? To, because again, you know, as we're discovering, um, you know, a government official, government official X that gets in trouble and they get him, you know, with certain videos and certain whatever, it's because a lot of these paper trails, a lot of these trails, they're coming from YouTube. But again, if you separate both, then all of a sudden, you know, again, you know, a lot of these individuals are covered as well. So there's a lot of incentive for doing this on both sides of the aisle, you know, meaning the government side and YouTube side, you know, YouTube, you know, from a business perspective, this is what they want. And, and the government side from a, from a government side, you know, with all the uh, Epstein stuff out there, you know, this is the way that they want to move forward, literally. Okay. Now, now let's talk about the end of YouTube, you know, going forward, um, assuming that this goes bad. Now, you know, this could literally, you know, just be a blip on the radar and not really be affecting anyone um, that's either kid friendly content or be affecting anyone that's adult friendly content. What do I mean? Because again, if you're adult friendly content, you're good to go. Nothing to worry about. If you're kid friendly content, you already just go to YouTube kids or you go to some other, you know, um, kid friendly platform, which they will establish, even though they might have not have been announcing it or talking about it yet. I, I, I really haven't, I, I really do have an inclination. Um, I got a you know, I just have a feeling that that's the route that you that, that YouTube will be going. That it's just gonna just create a special platform for kids, a la, you know, what Disney did with Disney Plus in order to you know kind of you know 
ram it up Netflix ass. So I think that's something like that, basically. And again, this is also very, very good, you know, when it's, uh, you know, as YouTube is trying to compete with all these, you know, again, the Netflixes of the world, the Disney Pluses of the world, and so on and so forth, I think it'll help a lot. It's it's just, it's it's it, this is actually gonna help YouTube as a whole, as a company, I think. Now, moving forward to the censorship aspect of all this stuff. Okay, listen guys, this is the basic reality of everything, okay? It's really not that difficult um, to really process, you know, when it comes to the purge and all this stuff. Look, everyone out there that is freaking the fuck out as a creator really basically just doesn't want to start over. And I get it. I totally get it. But the reality is, is that, you know, people like me, hey guys, super sorry about that. I'm um, just having a few technical difficulties. I'm actually just uh, filming on my GoPro. I have it hooked up to this thing here because I just had the idea to film this episode and I was like, let, whatever, let me just film. And I forgot to charge the camera ahead of time. So therefore, you know, I was having some technical difficulties on that side, uh, that side of things. But anyways, back to what I was saying. So the whole thing with the YouTube situation, listen guys, this is basically it. All the technology stuff that I'm always talking about, you know, all the Bitcoin, blockchain, decentralized technology, all of this stuff, this new world, this new ecosystem, this new everything that we're building. Basically, that th this that's happening right now, if all of a sudden there's like a humongous YouTube purge and everyone is purged off the platform, guess what? You know what I mean? There's already um, platforms out there that exist that will be able to host all of this stuff and all of a sudden now where before a lot of people was like oh youtube sucks youtube this youtube whatever um why you know why you know what i mean like um why isn't there an alternative there is an alternative the, but the thing is is that you know most people even though they're at the alternative most people can't find them at the alternative because everyone just loves youtube for a million reasons that's not what we're gonna that's not what we're getting here at but if all of a sudden youtube decides to shoot itself on in the foot with a shotgun all right, rendering itself useless, then people are not gonna have a choice but to go to these new platforms in order to watch what they wanna watch. Look, everyone, everyone wants to have a Netflix account, but there's a few of you guys out there that don't have a Netflix account. Now, do you guys have any trouble watching any of the shows or movies that you guys wanna watch? You know you don't. For example, I'm out here in Mexico, very hard for me to catch NFL games. And on top of that, it's probably extremely expensive for me to catch my Dolphins games. Guess what? I'm able to watch them no problem on my computer. Just like a lot of people are able to watch them on their computer, no problem, okay? And so on and so forth. Sure, it's not the optimal way to watch any of these things. It's not the optimal, you know, viewing experience per se. But at the end of the day, if you really want to watch something, you can watch it. We have platforms out there that will create um, the necessarily the necessary um, infrastructure in order to make this happen and again in a lot of cases we already have them you know in the case of DLive, BitTube and so many others so all of a sudden these um, platforms that don't have any traction at all overnight are gonna see this humongous uptick okay in uploads and people watching it and so on and so forth because basically what's gonna happen is the same thing that happened with MySpace and Facebook. It seemed like it literally happened overnight. One day, everyone was on MySpace. Literally everyone and your mother was on MySpace. And before you knew it, you were talking to your mom and your grandma on Facebook. And you're like, how did I get here? Okay? Like the Talking head song. How did I get here? But, you know, that's basically it. You know, we're, we're just going to see another one of those. And it's coming. We can see it. It's, it's, if it's not this COPA stuff, it's going to be something else and so on and so forth, all right? And, uh, you know, when these new rules and regulations, you know, that are now established by the government, they are trying to get, be ahead of this wave. Because, again, all of a sudden, you know, you are on another platform, a decentralized platform. For example, me. I'm Jose Ortega, and I'm on a decentralized platform, and I do a video with lambo my horse you know my fake plastic horse again adult themed but the government is the one that gets to choose if that video is adult friendly or kid friendly okay and um even if you're on a decentralized platform and they can't find you well guess what i mean if you're showing your face uh they, they can find your ass 
like that, all right? Like that. So they will. So the thing is, you know, we, we are literally every single day that moves forward, we're going into uncharted territory. Not only with YouTube and the censorship there, not only with, you know, the fake news and all that shit. You, again, you, you, everyone has a different definition of fake news, but I think most people know what we mean by that. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just seeing a humongous shift in consciousness all around the world. Look at all the protests, look at all the people up in arms and they've had enough. Look at all the, you know, all these pedophilia, pedophilia, whatever rings, you know, getting uh, destroyed or getting discovered, getting, you know, exposed. Um, you know, all, it's just one thing after another. It seems to me like, it seems like to the rest of the world as well, that the last people, you know, the last people to wake up are the United States at the moment. It seems like everyone's waking up already and everyone's already woke. And I mean woken up for reals. I'm not talking about the left version of woke, which they stole that word. You know, woke used to mean something completely different. Now woke is a bad word. I mean, for reals, you know, but I don't want to get into that either. But, you know, at the end of the day, basically, you know, what's happening, what's going to be happening moving forward from here is that we are winning the game. We're winning the battle. And these are these these events are just going to be the the catalyst, the kickstarters. The, the fire to the gasoline um, that are going to ignite this thing and put this stuff into overdrive. And especially moving forward now with the elections, with all these other things, you know, the mass censorship, censoring happening all over the place. And it's just one thing after another. And so, you know, when it comes to like government intervention, it does, and the government doesn't really have a great track record um, to any of this stuff. Um, I'll just give you an example that we all know off the top of our head, but the war on drugs. As we all know, the war on drugs has only made things worse for everybody. So right now, the war on knowledge, okay, the war on us, the creators, the war on, okay, the internet, the people out there, you know, doing stuff like what I'm doing, guess what? It's only going to make things worse for them. Okay, this thing is only going to start getting intensified. Things are only really going to start, you know, um, getting more hardcore from this point on. And that uh, to me, um, I'm, 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 I'm all about it. And to me, it's more like game on. I can't wait. I'm not even going to lie to you. So to me, I, I, I'm not really necessarily looking forward to December 10th and, you know, January 1st and all of these dates in which a lot of these things are going to start getting implemented. But at the same time, I am, you know, I'm a big proponent of change, um, especially when the change is for the betterment of all of us. And I think that this is part of that. Because at the end of the day, we cannot change YouTube. We cannot change Facebook. We cannot change Twitter. We cannot change any of these pieces of technology to fit our needs. That's not how this stuff works. Necessity is the mother of invention. So all of a sudden now, we are going to all be in necessity, okay? We're all going to have this need for this stuff, these videos, this content, this, uh, this, this new product that YouTube has kind of like invented. Um, and um, just because YouTube decides to not put it on their platform anymore or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, it doesn't mean that we the people don't want this stuff. Okay, and we the people are gonna find it and gonna get it, and it's all again, all this is it's all history, guys. This is not the first time this happens, this happens all the freaking time. So obviously we know that the products, okay, that are created by creators on the YouTube platform are things that everyone, everyone enjoys and loves and likes. If all of a sudden YouTube decides to get rid of that, or in the, in the case of what's happening now, the government decides for YouTube what it's going to get rid of and what it's not going to get rid of, then we, the people, have to, again, take measures into our own hands and move, you know, not just progress and technology and all this stuff forward, but, you know, we, we will do it. You know what I mean? It's not about, you know, when, it's about how we're going to do it. And, you know, again, right now, um, it seems like an impossible task because everything at the beginning seems like an impossible task. But for all of you guys out there that know what's up, the reality is, is that everything always seems insurmountable. Everything seems impossible at first. But once you're done, once you're, you know, going, you realize, oh, man, I should have done this a long time ago. So I think that honestly, basically, the only thing that everyone's afraid of is a massive YouTube purge. That's number one. OK, if that were to happen, 
well, guess what? We already have another platform or platforms, you know, in order to host all of these videos and uh, and continue to provide this stuff to the masses and to the people. So basically what all this is going to do is just kickstart this transition from point A to point B. And sure, a lot of people don't want to go to point B because, you know, there's no monetization on, on these other platforms. There's no monetization per se yet, but it's all going to get there. Okay. As you guys all know, there's all kinds of monetization. It doesn't have to be YouTube paying you. There's a lot of ways. And remember, YouTube used to be deep. You know, YouTube was only monetized years ago. It wasn't something that was monetized from the get go. So at the end of the day, guys, you know, really, I don't see, you know, much more out of this except you know, this is just the way the cookie crumbles. This is just history. This is just another day. And um, honestly, for people like me that are super proponents of near zero marginal cost, who are proponents of uh, decentralization, proponents of uh, freedom, proponents of uh, privacy, proponents of um, the real open and then open sourced internet, you know, to me, this is great freaking news because now it's forcing people to move from one point to the other, assuming this goes the wrong way. So, you know, right now, um, basically, we're gonna see what happens. You know, at the end of the day, don't don't worry yourself too much out there, you know what I mean? For anyone out there that's a creator and is all of a sudden afraid that the FTC is gonna, you know, find all of your videos and before you know it, you're gonna come out with a $1.5 million fine that you gotta pay the government or else, you know, again, guys, don't be so scared. You know, I remember that, you know, if all of a sudden you steal an NFL game or you steal um, cable, you know, yeah, the fines are just as great or greater. But when was the last time you saw anyone do any serious time or even get convicted of stealing cable? So it's kind of like that same thing. And if all of a sudden we start seeing convictions left and right or we start seeing people getting fined left and right for all kinds of shit, man. If the people are not up in arms already and the people are not already protesting, I think that this might be the final straw. Again, I mean, you know, what gets people in the U.S., you know, to, you know, to, um, to have these huge demonstrations? It's not hunger. It's not financial inequality. It's not any of these things that actually are clean water. It's not, you know, it's, not, it's none of these things that actually matter. It's something like you know, getting rid of plastic straws so that we save one turtle. So this literally falls in line with that. All of a sudden now, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you're taking away people's entertainment. And guess what? People don't like, or people don't take too kindly to that. So if all of a sudden we start seeing a massive purge, we start seeing this in a very, very, very negative, uh, you know, route, you know, we start seeing this go down the very negative uh, street, it's only gonna serve the betterment of humanity going forward because that's it guys you know at this point we already have all the tools to build the future that we need to build to get away from our overlords and our masters and it's uh you know we just need the incentive to use these tools to build this brand new internet and this brand new future for all of us so if they're the ones that are incentivizing us well hey so be it that's usually how it goes all right if all of a sudden, you know, they make your favorite thing illegal, is that going to make you stop doing your favorite thing? No, it's not. All right. So it's just that same mentality. All right. Now multiply that by millions and millions and millions and millions of people. Yeah, exactly. All right. We're in for some very, very exciting times. 2020 is already going to be a fucking you know a crazy year it's starting off it's already going to be kick-started by something like this we got the elections we got so many things down the pike you know the economy tanking and just you know all the protests happening around the world and now this and again we still have a month and a half left in the year to see how what what other stuff is going to come out of all this but anyways guys thanks again for watching don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. I really hope you enjoyed this content and enjoy all the content on this channel. If you do, you already know what to do. Watch another video and um, share this video and um, yeah, do all that stuff. Guys, I love you. Check out the sponsor at the end of this video. And uh, more importantly than anything else, don't forget to stay awesome. Thanks again for watching and uh, see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, me and Lambo are still here. Show's not over. Just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder to please 
check out the online store where you can find all kinds of awesome merch. Also, check out joseatiaga.com where, you know, it's the website for me and all this other stuff. So also, you know, check out Discord. It's an online community in which everyone, all my fans, hang out. Again, just, you know, look at the, click at the link in the bottom description of every video here um, where you can just join the community and join and continue the conversation where we talk about, you know, all this and beyond. So please, don't forget to check us out there. Check me out on Instagram, check me out on Twitter, check me out everywhere. In fact, always look at the description of every video. You can find all kinds of stuff at the bottom of the description of every video. Again, I'm always giving you all kinds of goodness. So, you know, whether you're checking the description of the video or whether you're watching the next video, which you're gonna see some here now, you're gonna have all kinds of fun. So again, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys when you.